Hey everybody, Guitar Guts here. This video is a continuation and a breakdown of one of the bass guitars that I featured in my short scale basses compared video. So if you haven't seen that overall video yet, you might wanna go back and look at that first and then come back here and I'll give you the specifics of this Sterling Stingray short scale bass. So if I had to sum up this little bass in one word, it's simply fun. This is a fun little bass to play. Now, I'm gonna tell you some things I love about it and some things I didn't like that much about it, but I don't want you to think, oh gosh, he's criticizing it for some reason. I shouldn't buy this bass. Not at all. It's a great little bass. Um, and my own personal preference and my own little <laughs> gripes about it are really just minor little things that can be taken care of super easily. Um, it's a great little bass that feels fantastic to play. And I think one of the reasons for that is, like I said in the overall video, where they've moved this bridge down toward the uh, rear end of the body here, which in effect moves the neck further down toward the body and makes it feel like a much shorter scale bass than those other three basses I compared it to. Even though it's the same size, it's still a 30 inch scale short scale bass, but it feels more like the Ibanez micro bass to me because the reach is not that far and that makes it super comfortable to just sit back, you know, kick back on the couch and have it on your lap and it doesn't wear your arm out trying to reach out to play those lower frets. Um, <clears throat> So this is a, a really fun little bass, and it's very well made. The uh, basic structure of it is very well put together, very sound, very sturdy feeling. You got some pretty good tuners up top here that tend to hold tune fairly well. I've got no real complaints about those. Uh, when you are stringing this bass up, one of the things you need to be aware of, if you're using lighter gauge strings, and this is not a flaw with the bass, it's just you need to keep this in mind so that you string it correctly. Um, this G string right here, um, you need to make sure you get a few extra winds down the post on that string so you've got uh, adequate enough break angle over the nut to not let that string buzz in the fret slot. Haven't really had that much trouble with it, but I can tell that the break angle on that's a little shallower than the other strings, and I just like to be safe. So I wind it maybe one or two more winds around than I would any of the other normal strings. Uh, the neck on this was really well put together. Uh, there were no uh, high frets or anything like that. Um, but one of the things that I did find on this that was different from the other guitars uh, in that review uh, the frets were fairly rough feeling on this guitar. Um, kind of uncommonly rough to where before I played it much, it had such a scratchy feel to it that I went and removed the strings, taped up the fretboard and did a fret polish on it before I continued playing it. Um, it's not that the fret ends weren't finished or anything like that and there was nothing sticking out and poking you. It's just the frets themselves didn't feel very polished. They felt fairly rough. So I took care of that and now they feel a whole lot better to play on. Um, maybe not quite as smooth as the Fender or Squire or even the Ivan is, but they're still uh, very playable and they don't bother me at all now. Uh, the other thing that I had to work on just a little bit when I got it was the back of the neck. Um, <clears throat> and this was true you know, this is this is not their sort of top of the Sterling line instrument. It's uh, similar to maybe the Ray 4, somewhere in between maybe the Ray 4 and the Ray 24, which is what's sitting there. Um, but one thing that I noticed on this one, as well as the Ray 34 that I bought a while back, uh, the neck didn't feel very finished. It didn't feel very smooth on the back. It's almost like they had sprayed some kind of sealer on and then had not finished sanded it after they sprayed the last coat on. It just felt a little bit rough. Um, and the weird thing is one or two, and I'm seriously, one or two passes up and down with uh, 1200 grit sandpaper makes it feel as smooth as glass. And I just don't understand why they are not doing that at the factory. Um, maybe they don't want it to feel as polished as their you know, $2,700 Music Man Stingrays. But I mean, I, I think if somebody's buying this, they're not really 
this base is not really competing with that for that market. You know, this base is competing with the Fender and the Squire, and those necks felt a whole lot smoother than this, this one did right off the rack. So I'm not sure why they're not finishing the back of the neck. But like I said, maybe two times up and down the neck with 1200 grit sandpaper and this thing is smooth as glass. Now the Ray 24 that I bought uh, a couple of years ago was already that smooth right off the shelf. Um, but this one was just a little rough. But once those two things were polished out, man, this thing plays fantastic. Um, and uh, the humbucking pickup does fine. Now, this is not an active bass. This is a passive bass. So it doesn't quite have the presence and the brightness of the ceramic pickup with the active preamp that's in the Ray 24 and the Ray 4 um, guitars. Uh, but it sounds fine. It's just when I, like if I'm playing my full size Sterling Ray 24, and then I switch over to this short scale. I always reach down to the amp and turn up the gain just a little bit. And you kind of have to do that to compensate, I think. I, I don't know whether it's the um, the lack of an active circuit in it or the um, neodymium magnets in this pickup. Because I've never had ne neodymium magnet pickups before. So I don't know if that's what's causing just a little bit of drop off in the volume and and sort of a blandness to it that the regular ceramic pickups in their uh, full size line don't have. Uh, but I suspect. Uh, now I'm not saying it's a bad pickup. It sounds fine and it doesn't really bother me when I'm playing it. But when I switch over to the full sized and hear that ceramic pickup, it's just like, ooh, that's that's better. <laughs> Uh, so I'm wondering, you know, and I just haven't splurged uh, to buy one yet. I'm wondering if a Seymour Duncan ceramic Music Man replacement pickup would really supercharge this thing and make it sound better. I may do that later. I'll let you know. I'll film another video and let you know how it sounds. Now, the control knob configuration here is a bit weird. You, It's not a regular volume, volume tone like you see on a lot of basses. Um, you do have a volume up here at the top. Um and then you have a um, selector knob here that selects between series wiring, which is like full on, parallel wiring, which just takes a little bit of the harshness out and rounds off the tone a little bit, but you still got the full humbucker running. And then a split mode, which gives you like a single coil. I don't know which one of these coils is running, but it's only one of them when you do that. So that gives you a, a much thinner, brighter sound. And that's really versatile. I like that little uh, switch. I almost wish my full size had that on there because it's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, you got a tone knob here. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I got this guitar, the knobs weren't sitting on there completely flat, and they still are just a little bit wonky. The way they're sitting on there, they wobble a little bit. And I've tried to adjust it. There's set screws there, and you can try to adjust it, but they they never set completely flat. Now, the tone knob down here feels very solid. The uh, selector switch is really solid, but it's also just a little bit hard to turn, which, you know, if you're gigging and you're prone to hit stuff, that's probably a really good thing that that's hard to turn because you're not going to knock it accidentally out of the position you want it in. And then this knob also has, the volume also has a push-push. Let's see if I can. It has a push-push volume boost. And I don't, I don't really know what that's doing internally, but there is just a little bit of increased output when, uh, when you engage that. Um, I don't use it a whole lot. Um, I don't know what, it, I don't know what it is about push-pull pots. I, I feel like they're delicate, and so I just, I never mess with them much. So I haven't used it that much. I can see that it gives you a little bit of extra boost, and maybe that would be really good if you were in a band setting playing and you just need that little extra over the top. You know, that would be great. Um, so yeah, the pickup sounds good. Uh, the selector switches and volume setup is really versatile for a single humbucker um, bass. It's really great. Um, 
And let's see, what else was I going to talk to you about? I guess that's about it. Um, it is a great little base. Once you make a couple little modifications, like uh, polishing those frets, maybe sand the back of the neck a little bit, put some you know new strings on it. Uh, it is just a fun, fun little base to play, uh, and it's one of my absolute favorites. I just I love stingrays anyway, uh, and this one's just a super fun version of that. Well, uh, I hope that gives you enough information, and we will talk to you later.